and welcome to Barnabas Junction. In this video I'm going to be showing how to easily weather trackside lineside trunking courtesy of advice from Tim Cooper of Scrapline Model Railway Weathering. So in front of you you can see some trackside trunking that I've already fitted, weathered and applied ballast back in place ready for PVA mix to be applied. So let's take it over to an area that I still need to have done and show you what techniques I've used courtesy of Tim and his excellent advice. Okay, so this is the area that uh, we're going to be applying some weathering to. You can just see a section there that has already been done and this is now what's left to be done. This is a, using the Ten Commandments um, line side trunking kit and here's one as I have an extra pack. It's the Mega Pack, uh, it's £10 and it's I say Ten Commandments, double O gauge, cable trunking and this pack is approximately 10 feet in total and comes in injection moulded plastic and comprises of many different sections long sections, shorter sections, junctions, uh, loose slabs that you can have over gapped areas as you can see just in that piece there. Uh, it's an excellent pack and very easy to work with and this was chosen after discussions with many of the big modelers out there uh, at many of the exhibitions that I've been to as being the prototypically the most accurate available on the market. Uh, other packs and uh, suppliers do do excellent kits, but uh, this has been nominated as probably being the most accurate. As you can see in the pack though there, there's a section there for relay boxes and that will be something I'll be coming on to do later. But for the time being, I do have the actual trunking in place and prior to that uh, I removed the already ballasted sections to place it in. It's been stuck in using uh, the standard Yuhu Bostic glue, no super glue required and is stuck in nice and firmly but is easily can be removed if any alterations need to be made or additions added to it. So. After speaking with Tim at Scrapline Model Wet Railway Weathering, um, having a chat with him on with some excellent advice from the chap, um, he mentioned about some products that are best for doing this sort of thing. Obviously, weathering powders, adhesives for the powders and stuff like that was advised on. And first thing was to use was some uh, Humbrol Matte Coat. This is uh, used as the adhesive to stick on the weathering powders um, and it's absolutely easy to use. Now I've done quite a lot already and you can see I've used virtually none of it. It goes a long way so one bottle of this will last absolutely ages. So that's the first product. Now you mentioned about weathering powders but unfortunately I wasn't able to get my hands on some. But what he did off, uh, suggest was getting some pastels. So I got my hands on these. These are a cheap set of pastels, um, £3 from the local Hobbycraft store. Other pastels are available at other manufacturers and stores out there. But these were super cheap, £3 for this full pack. And with the perfect colours that were required, we've got black, green, brown. As you can see, I've been using the brown, I've been using the black, a little bit of green here and there. Um, not really used any of the others, but they'll be there for future projects. So. Using these, we're going to apply weathering to this trunking. Before I did any final weathering, I did have a length here, which I did a test piece as a test piece, and these were the results, which I was very pleased with. This was the first attempt at any proper weathering. It's still slightly different that's on the layout, but nothing's exact. Everything will be completely different, but this is the kind of result that I was looking for. Um, looking mossified, greeny, um, as concrete would be in the real life. And 
as you can see, the results are quite impressive. Um, I'm very pleased with the outcome. So hopefully this is how we'll get that to look sort of. So tools that I needed to use were simple paintbrush for applying the matte coat, the humble matte coat, and a craft knife of some sort to scrape at the pastels. So let's get on and start working on the line side trunking. So as I said, the first item we need to be using is the Humbro matte coat. And for this, all we simply do is just dip your brush into the liquid and apply it. Not really fussed about the amount, as long as uh, what you need to be weathering has a good coat. as you can reapply in any areas that you may have missed. So applying the matte coat, you can see it's getting like a glossy finish. Now taking Tim's advice is to wait for this to start to dry. It will go very tacky. If you apply it straight away, it will be very runny. Uh, and won't it'll still give a good result, but for the the best results that you're looking for, so allow it to go tacky. Now, one thing I've found with this is once it has started to go tacky and dryish, if you w make any mistakes or want to alter what you've already done, all you need to do is just apply a tiny more amount more and it will re-liquidize and you can make your alterations. Okay, so we've now applied our first coat of the Humble matte coat and we now want our pastels. For this, first of all, we want to apply slight dusting of the black. I also like to just give a tiny dusting of the green to give the mossy effect and then we finish off with the final dustings of the brown. So simply all we do, using the craft knife, and it doesn't matter how much you put on or how little you put on, you can always adjust it afterwards, is just get your craft knife along the edge of it and literally just scrape the side of the pastel over it. Now I found with the black it's a nice covering, Not need to, don't need to put too much on with the black. That'll do. And now we'll apply a tiny amount of the green as this is quite a bright green, don't want to be applying too much as it will spread. Don't worry about getting anything on the rest of your scenics as it will blend in over time. So now I'm going to reapply the main colour that I wish to use and that's the brown and a good dusting of the brown Like so. Now as you can see, yeah, you can get an idea of the covering that we've got. So now the next step is to spread and mix the colours together, giving the line side cable trunking a good covering of the pastel colours. And simply, all you do is get your finger and just rub it in. rubbing it into the gaps between each of the paved areas. You can use paper tissue or anything, but I found the finger is adequate for the job. Spreading it all the way around 
giving it all a good covering. Now don't worry too much about the sides as your ballast will pretty much cover the sides. It's mainly the tops that you want to get the proper effect. So there you go, you can see there it's all rubbed in. Now that's still quite a bit dark. So this is the magic that Tim always suggests. It's getting a little bit of tissue and lightly wipe over to wipe off the excess. Like so. It will look like it's going clean again, but we haven't finished yet. So that's a bit of a wipe. You can see now that uh, the sections between them are highlighted with the pastels it's soaked in. So as we have wiped it, what we do now, we apply another thin coat. This will help also spread the liquids and any pastels about you can pick them up and dust them on as well and you'll start to see now that you are getting a, the desired effect that you're hopefully looking for and as before if you think it's a bit dark a bit too much just get your cloth or tissue and just give it a dab, removing any excess that you may have overdone it with. Like so. I will now leave that to dry before applying another coat of the powders. Okay, so I've let that stand now for about 15 minutes and it's now going very very tacky it's almost uh, dryish and what I need to do now is even more highlight the gaps between each of the concrete slabs across the top and also the areas such as here which is an open top area where cabling is viewable uh, where the concrete slab is unfortunately slid off over time so for this Simply, I just get the black pastel and rub over the very top and where the sections are, just get the edge of the pastel, scraping them over, making sure that the dust, the powder of the pastel is getting in between. Scraping it nice across. This gives it a nice darkish colour then to finish off with. And as you can see, it is very much darkening off now. Because the uh, matte coat is very tacky now, any dusting that's coming off is instantly sticking to it and spreading about. There we go. So that's all out of black dust rubbing over. And now again, get our tissue or cloth. Give it a wipe over. Until we get it to the desired darkness or lightness that we wish to keep it at. If at any point you feel that it is still it's a bit too dark, in sections 
all you need to simply do is get your mat coat and your brush and here if we just reapply it it will liquidize what's already in there get your cloth and as you can see it'll just wipe straight off like so we'll just darken that up again there we go I'm quite happy with that now I think that's looking okay so we'll let that now to nicely dry off uh, give it about 20 minutes in, depending on the environment that you're currently in will determine how quickly it will dry off so I'll leave this now and we'll come back shortly with the final part okay so I've now left that for about 20 minutes and it is virtually dry it's not tacky in any way, um, which is fine. So what we need to do now is one final thing, and that's to seal it um, so that nothing gets wiped off for the future, especially when I'm going to be doing the reballasting around the area. And to do that, Tim advised to apply some Humbrol acrylic varnish. Um, this will help to seal the powders, the pastel powders, in place. So always have a ventilated area I'm using a piece of card here just to protect the track in front um, I don't want to be getting any of that on the track so we'll just give the can a shake okay and applying from a distance of a couple of inches just a good spray Move that over just to seal that off like so so now all we need to do is leave that varnish to dry and then apply the ballast ready for gluing back into place right so there we go that's now sprinkler ballast put back in place it's all sealed it's glued it's dried and looking exactly how I would like it to be I've also done some dusting on the dummy point motors on either side as you can see to tone them down just that little bit so that's it weathering trackside trunking thanks very much to Tim of scrap line model railway weathering for his invaluable advice something I've never dabbled with before and this is the first time and I'm very pleased with the results Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, share, comment and subscribe. Let me know what you think about this technique and the results given. I look forward to reading your messages in the comment section below. So until next time, thanks for watching. Bye for now. Bye.